the lie, let's hit the dance floor Don't work too hard, my break a backbone Return to the Mac, the king is back though Corvette and cash, I never like those She saw the stone, you know how that go Fatality, my diamonds that cold Versace trunks, I hit my backstroke Knock on the door, she at the back, bro As you probably know, I recently upgraded my camera gear to the Sony a7 IV and I rigged it up with the cage, the handles and of course a field monitor. For this build I used the Andycine C7 because it's the top notch you can find for a reasonable price with full HD, super bright HDR support, big 7 inch screen but it had two major problems. First it was really power hungry and even with my MoMA external VMAN battery I couldn't power it and needed two dedicated batteries for long shooting and second it didn't support 4K60. The reason why I bought this specific camera was to make cinematic b-roll this field monitor was too limiting for me so in this video i'll tell you which one is the best field monitor that i am currently using for the sony a7 IV the name isn't that different it's called the andy cine c7 light but there are some major differences I promise because it solves all the problem and gripes i had before of course there is some compromise as well it's everything you expect from the c7 but with 4k 60 support slimmer design less power hungry still hdr support but with less bright display and of course touch screen and with a slightly cheaper price. I'm not gonna go over all the features specific of this kind of monitor like focus picking, exposure and false color. I explained all of them in my Cine C7 review which I'll link up here. This monitor is still made of plastic of course but it isn't necessarily a bad thing. It makes it super super light and this is very important in an heavy rig. It has all the HDMI ports on the left side side and luckily the power input and output is on that side as well. The C7 had it on the bottom part near the base where the attachment was and it was unusable. The profile is slimmer and uh, of course the bezel are slimmer and there is place on the back for a single battery since it's less bright and less power hungry. The feature I love the most is the 4K60 support. As I mentioned to make nice 4K60 b-roll and then slow down in post you want to have a screen that supports 60fps and doesn't go black when you turn on that mode. It's definitely a simple thing but I feel like uh, it's a killer feature that the C7 didn't have. The panel is very smooth and responsive in 60fps mode. We're talking about a 7 inch full HD screen with a 1920x1200 with aspect ratio of 16 to 10 display that tops up to a respectable 500 nits brightness. Nice 1200 to 1 contrast ratio so that you won't lose quality watching the 10 bit colors of the Sony A7 IV. Brightness is still enough for HDR mode which is supported and this is a bonus feature since the Sony A7 IV supports HDR and HLG2020. Of course there are a tons of pro features with field monitor in general that will make your life so much easier as a content creator or a filmmaker. I just want to mention my favorite one which is the LUT support. Just with an SD card reader you can upload the LUTs that you use, like I'm using the Mati Opaya special one so you won't see on the film monitor the washed out S-Log3 colors really flat but you will see the nice final color on the image while you are recording so you know how the final colors will be and this is really nice also I really like the false color that lets you decide uh, if the image is exposed correctly because the exposimeter on the camera makes an average on the false color you see which area is darker and which area is too bright. And then the focus, when the focus is crucial you can pinch to zoom to make sure everything is alright. All the touch shortcuts are the same, left for brightness up and down and right for volume up and down. And then I'll show you some b-roll that I recorded with this Sony A7 IV and 4K60 mode and they are really really nice.
The price for these monitors is $216, which is much less than $260 target of the C7. In my opinion, for my workflow and the Sony A7 IV, this monitor is far better than the C7, even if it's cheaper. So this wraps up for today. Let me know what you guys think about this product. If you have any question, please leave a comment in the section. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and as always, stay tuned on Shades of Tech. Ciao!